Welcome back. More than 22,000 people have been killed in Turkey after a massive 7.8 earthquake struck the country. Today, we're joined by Zach, Dr. Zach Lifton, who uh, is a hazard geologist to give us some more insight on what's happening across the world. First of all, thank you so much for joining us here today. Happy to be here. Thanks. So we're talking about earthquakes. I mean, just how common are earthquakes like this? Um, in Turkey, they're really common. Um, Turkey sits on a, a small tectonic plate, and it's surrounded by three other larger plates. So there's um, differential movement between those plates. They're jostling each other around, and the boundaries of those plates uh, accommodate that movement uh, with faults. And faults, uh, when they move, create earthquakes. So, so Turkey is a really um, active region. In terms of, I mean, you just mentioned it's an active region, but what about when it comes to magnitude so high as this earthquake was? Is that common as well? Well, these uh, size earthquakes are big, um, and they're not very common, but um, certainly they're normal. We expect to see a few of those um, size earthquakes a couple times every year somewhere in the world. Why was this particular earthquake so destructive? Um, well, it, it really depends on a couple of factors. One is the size of the earthquake. We know it was pretty big. Um, there's other factors like the depth. So the closer it is to the surface, the closer that energy is to the, to the infrastructure that we build. Um, and also um, building codes play a role in it. Um, the soil properties play a role. There's a number of factors. And so um, in Turkey, unfortunately, a lot of those factors um, were not in their favor. And so um, there was quite a bit of damage. What about aftershocks? Can you talk a little bit about, about that? Yeah, aftershocks are, are totally normal, common uh, occurrences with, with every earthquake. Um, so the larger the earthquake, the more aftershocks you have and the larger the aftershocks. So what we're seeing over there, I think so far is really common. Um, and, uh, but we can expect from a large earthquake, a pretty long sequence of aftershocks. So they're probably gonna be experiencing those for a while. What does it mean for us here in Idaho, because we also have a very active mm -hmm. fault line area as well. Can you talk about that? Yeah, Idaho is active tectonically. Um, we're not on a plate boundary like Turkey, so we, we probably don't um, expect something that large. Um, but we, we probably have faults that are capable of maybe magnitude 7 here, here in the state. Um, three years ago, we had the Stanley earthquake, magnitude 6.5. Uh, fortunately, that was really remote, so it didn't really cause a lot of damage, but we, we certainly have the possibility of, of earthquakes here in the state. What do you want folks to know who might be watching right now? Um, I think the, the, the main thing is just to know that earthquakes can happen. Uh, we can't predict them, uh, but we can prepare for them. So just uh, making a plan, having some supplies, um, you know, coordinating with your family so that you know what to do in an earthquake. All right, Dr. Yeah. Zachary Lifton, thank you so much for joining us thank here, you. Happy to be here on the news at four, and I'll send it to Rick.